Hi, welcome to ThinkX Academy. In this video, we are going to discuss unsupervised learning in detail. We have already discussed supervised learning and we have discussed linear regression, logistic regression and a, a lot of the topics in supervised learning. So now we have a good idea of how we can do prediction and how we can actually train the models to perform prediction. So uh, we even uh, performed linear regression in R to see how we can actually train a model. So we saw supervised learning in action. Now we are going to head towards unsupervised learning. We are going to see exactly why uh, so unsupervised learning is needed and how uh, we can apply unsupervised learning. Now unsupervised learning is really a very interesting topic and it has a lot of applications and a lot of tech companies do use unsupervised learning to find and understand patterns inside a data. So if I say, if I will write something about supervised learning, in supervised learning, we have a very important thing, which is we have a labeled data set, right? So I have a labeled data set. And from the very old example that we have been choosing for all the tutorials in the, unsuper in the supervised learning, which is of the housing prices. So the housing prices was our data set that we were using to predict uh, or train the model. Now in housing prices data set, we have area and we have price. So for every given, for a house with a given area, I have a mapping to a price and I can use this mapping to train the model by uh, doing the same thing which is finding the cost function hypothesis function and gradient descent and then I can actually do predict For a house with given some area, right? So I can predict a house with given some area I can predict the price of that house. So in supervised learning I can actually say we have a supervision of labels in a data set but in unsupervised learning we do not have in unsupervised learning we do not have label data set so the data set is unlabeled now most of the data sets that we have uh, and most of the uh, applications or the data sets that are available they are mostly unlabeled unlabeled means that it does not have the labels such as area price or anything so what we have is we just have uh, only one column of x with some uh, i can say some just features but i do not have a mapping of those features over price right so we have an unlabeled data set we do not have a labeled data set in unsupervised learning so what do we exactly do in unsupervised learning is we try to understand patterns in the data understand patterns in the data set so in the very uh, in the second tutorial of this machine learning playlist uh, we have discussed that in machine learning we try to either predict something inside a data set or we try to understand patterns in a data. So basically unsupervised learning is really helpful to find under and understand the patterns in a data and most specifically unlabeled data. Right. So there are a lot of applications of unsupervised learning. The very first application that I'm going to show you just now is how Google uses unsupervised learning to group the websites related to some keyword, to group websites related to keywords, right? So in supervised learning, since we have unlabeled data, 
Now, uh, you can see on internet, we have a lot of websites on internet. Internet is a connection of a lot of uh, websites and a lot of web pages, right? So there are a lot of websites and those websites contain some more web pages. So let's suppose I enter a word in a Google. Uh, in the Google search box, let's suppose we have a Google search box here and I enter some keyword here. Let's suppose I enter uh, data science inside a keyword. So what Google will do is Google has a collection of all those websites and web pages and they are basically unlabeled data sets. So we have those websites only. We just have the links for them and we have some data for them. Now what Google does is it uses the unsupervised learning to uh, understand the group of websites or web pages that belongs to this keyword data science and uh, it will perform some uh, ranking methods and some uh, complex algorithms also to uh, show you the results related to data science, some of the best results related to data science. So that's one uh, good application of unsupervised learning. So in unsupervised learning, since we know that supervised learning is also classified in linear regression and logistic regression. And unsupervised learning can be uh, done or I can just say we can perform unsupervised learning or we can understand patterns in a data using two very important techniques which I'm going to use a red color to represent these techniques. The first technique is known as clustering and the second technique is the association. So from the next tutorial onwards, we will study these two topics, which is clustering and association. We will also discuss some uh, more different techniques and algorithms, including k-means clustering, hierarchical clustering, and a lot of other topics uh, such as dimensionality reduction. And with th these are the very important uh, techniques because uh, they are used in unsupervised learning. So we will, in the next tutorial, we will discuss what is clustering and we will get a basic idea of how we can, if we have a unlabeled data set, how we can actually do clustering. So the basic idea is uh, we just use unsupervised learning to find the groups of data with some on the basis of some similarities and dissimilarities. We will get that. We will uh, discuss it in detail in the next tutorial of clustering. So before that, I just want to cover one more very important application of unsupervised learning. And it is actually to find or to detect security breaches. So let's suppose we have a data set. We have a data set such that I have a data set of some good users, right? So there are some good users in a data set. Good users. And good users means they actually use, uh, they, they are authenticated, they are authenticated with the security system. And since they're authenticated, we can actually build some similarities. We can draw some similarities or the unsupervised learning will draw some similarities uh, within these users, right? So if there is any user, let's say there is some bad user and there is a bad user, uh, I will say that this is some anonymous user. Some anonymous user, let's say it is uh, a user Z and this user is not authenticated and it is using some uh, means of uh, or it is using some vulnerabilities in the system to exploit some of the features of the or 
to extract some of the very important data of these good users, right? So since these users have some similarities in them, we can use unsupervised learning to understand this pattern of similar uh, similarities. And if there is any anonymous user that tries to enter into the system, our unsupervised learning will, it will be able to understand that there is some anomaly or some, uh, I can say, there is some different type of pattern that is generating in our data. In that case, we can detect that this user is actually causing the whole uh, security breach. So this is one more application of unsupervised learning. As we will discuss more and more topics, including clustering association, we will uh, get to see some more applications of unsupervised learning.